led to the led to the point being deducted. Mark Wheeler ducking. Starling with his elbow up, and Mark really fell down. I, I would have to say, Chris, that I thought Mark Wheeler took a dive there. And he was holding as his as Starling's trainer came out and told the referee, jo uh, Georgia Cruz, that after all, Freeland is holding. Well, matter of opinion, that's what makes boxing and horse racing okay, so a you. difference of opinion. And the great Travers Stakes coming up right here on Wide World of Sports later. Freeland is the champion in blue. We're in the seventh round, scheduled for 15. Looking ahead, Freeland has gone 10 rounds twice. With the right hand by Sterling over Freeland's low left again. You've seen Mark do something here I've never seen him do before. It's that, that push right there with the shoulder. It's almost like a, a blocking drill. He's pushing with his arms, but also getting his shoulder into Marlon Sterling. Trying to keep him outside. Now there again, Freeland pulls Sterling on top of him. jabs that got through another one that one blocked meanwhile while Breland tries to push his opponent away he's not in a hitting position he is right now there and Breland complaining of a low blow double building over it was a low blow what is wrong with Mark he has no stability on his leg he's been on the canvas I believe that seven times that now. is and we're around it was just at the belt, the shot. Of course, they were protecting him. I thought the blow was definitely low. There was a very good left hand by Starling, two jabs by Breland. Another one. You have to concentrate very hard, as we said, on how many of those punches are getting home. There's Mike Tyson. Watching Mark Freeland, two of the outstanding fighters in the world, coming from a couple of adjoining neighborhoods in Brooklyn, New York. This is as far south as Tyson has ever been. He's never been to Florida. His family's originally from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, he's missed a lot by not going to Atlanta, the my favorite city of New Orleans. Columbia is pleasant. Mapped out, char charted out in 1785. And it was General William Tecumseh Sherman that came through here, destroyed the town, 1865. Well, they rebounded. Again, really with the blocking tactic. Not a lot of good clean punches being landed, Chris. Really. Neither fighter able to uh, see, see. Marlon Either Freeland is really tired. I don't understand. This is a replay of a low blow. There you saw it come in, and uh, Breland bending over, indicating that it did hurt. Now we're in the eighth round. This could be a very pivotal round. I'm not sure if Breland, uh, a little on the tired side, a little lackadaisical. Scheduled for 15, remember. Mark has never gone that distance, only 10 rounds twice. Starling has gone 10 or more 15 times. Recover from an unintentional low blow. Are well, you ready? You saw Starling acknowledge it right away. There it was. Starling knew it was low. He came right over to try to help Breland up. Didn't want to lose a point on it. Referee having the discretion to award the foul boxer. As Alex said, up to five minutes. Of course, you can't win by a foul, a low blow. This may shake up, wake up Mark Breland enough. Oh, his jab is better. Yeah, he's not timid about using that left hand that was injured on Chris. The thing he hasn't been able to line up is that right hand. That right hand right down the pipe. He's been using it to the body, and again, he bends way down. The thing you're concerned about here watching Mark Breland halfway through the fight is does he have the physical strength? Right. You see there, he just flopped to the canvas. There was no, there was nothing there to put him down. He just flopped down. Very, very strange. We never question his courage. Only okay, the willingness, I think. Perhaps a little lack of it here. Now, this is his first title defense. And he's come back to Columbia, South Carolina, where he fought a boy named Twining. And it lasted one round, or stopped in the first.
first round. He wants to make a good showing, but he's fighting an unorthodox, menacing, troublesome contender in Marlon Starling and Red. Look at him. Keep peppering away. He pours in. And Martin looks a little bit tired right here. Yes. Second wind. He hasn't gotten it. His legs are a little lethargic at this point. I think Mark Freeland's a very mentally tough kid, a, a determined kid. But when he goes down, flopping down like that, every time Starling puts any strength on him, good punches by Freeland. A right and a left, and Mark tried to spin him, and he saw Starling put his left out and not let himself be spun. All right, the bell coming up, ending round eight in about five seconds. Mark Breland comes out after a motivating, strong talk by his trainer, Joy Ferriello. All the work that you put in, and you're taking this, well, he insinuated, not seriously. Well, here we are. Ninth round. I think he's taking it very, very seriously. I think he's about his own stamina. But Sterling is a three. tough opponent. He is tough to fight. Again, Mark trying to keep Sterling outside three straight times. He's giving him the shoulder. Okay, now right, he clinches. Right, Charlie Carter has complained that if, if you're going to penalize my man for throwing him down, penalize him for holding. My man's just trying to throw him down because he's being held all the time. And again, Breland clinches. Breland trying to hang on. There's Joey Fariello on the lower right of your screen. Starling in red, little puffiness around both eyes now. But it just keeps throwing punches. The body punches are landing. And that, but that left by Mark to the body left himself open, as we talked about earlier, to a right-hand counter, and he caught a right on the chop. And he looks tired. Mark Freeland sucking for air right now. And Starling now beginning to show effects from the body punches. Okay, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, good. Come on. You know, that's a tiring tactic, leaning on your opponent. Chris, Mark Freeland right now is exhausted. He is exhausted. His mouth is good. Shot and he didn't go down. His best right hand shot, and Starling is standing. Joey Barriello sees that his man is tired. He's got the stool up with a bunch of left around. He's got that stool about eight inches away from the ring. So he can get it out right away for Mark to sit down on. We'll get a rest in 50 seconds of round nine. very very hard and he should get a second win but he's gonna need one and unloading now is Starling and the Freeland comes back the best exchange Starling's mouthpiece came out in that exchange Chris his mouth was a little bloody before and it's in danger of getting a lot worse anger on the part of both welterweights they are angry Cool down. 